Hey up guys, it's Fish here and welcome my glorious Bannerman. So as many of you know, the Western Roman Empire is the hardest initial challenge in the game, uh, making them one of the most difficult factions to play as. This is pretty much due to the fact that they have like no infrastructure, uh, such a vast empire that it's so hard to keep everyone happy. Your armies are spread around everywhere. You have people migrating uh, away from the Huns, coming into your lands, trying to trying to raid, trying to take land for themselves. There's a lot of negative things. However, I have come up with a fairly good strategy, I think, on how to give you the best chance at a successful Western Roman Empire uh, campaign. Um, yeah, it may not be the best one. Uh, there may be strategies after this which are a lot more effective. So please take this with you know a pinch of salt. This strategy has literally been made up in about a day. So it may not be the best one. However, it's worked for me. So hopefully it can work for you guys. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so we'll go ahead and jump in and I will go ahead and show you guys what the strategy okay, guys, is. So we are now in the campaign. Um, I will quickly just run through why we have so many negative things happening to us, like what the current situation is. Um, pretty much uh, diplomatic, everyone hates us. Uh, a lot of people, like it's so hard to get trade agreements or alliances at the beginning. So that's pretty much out the, uh, yeah, as you can see, attitude. Everyone just dislikes us a lot. Public order wise, um, everywhere's just unhappy. Like Italy's fine and so is Liberia and Vienna's just about happy. But all these other provinces will eventually just start becoming unhappy. Like minus three, oh, that's currently plus three. Like that's going to go very, very soon. All these other places like Spain is just an, a, an abys abysmal pit of just unhappiness. Uh, Africa is just really unhappy. And you might think, oh, that's okay. I'll try I'll try and make these happy. Um, however, if we look at our financial situation, we're currently making 700 gold a turn. So how am I supposed to go ahead and upgrade this when it costs five grand? Like, it's just impossible. So... So you might uh, go ahead and just try and make a few places happy. So you might agree. Okay, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore Spain completely. I'm not gonna deal with that at all. I'm gonna ignore Britain. Uh, so your first instinct might be to do this. This is what I did the first time. Okay, cool. I was like, cool. I don't want these provinces. Abandon. Abandon. And you pretty much just I. This is what I pretty much did. I just abandoned everything I. So you may think destroying everything is a good idea. It means the enemy can't use it. It means that you get some money. Yeah, look at my money at the moment. I have 37k um, in the bank. Like, that's, you know, think, oh, that's absolutely amazing. It means I can then upgrade the rest of my empire. However, this is not the case. If you look at happiness now, minus 205. And that's going to turn into a civil war soon, which gives you more unhappiness. Like, destroying stuff just isn't the way forward. Just destroying one province, I don't think is worth it. At least early on, it's just not worth it. So, uh, yeah, make sure you don't do that. Okay, guys, so you might be asking, if I can't abandon places, how am I supposed to get money? And how am I supposed to sort out public order? Because as you can see right now, public order is abysmal. Like, all these places are, start, are going to start becoming unhappy. Like, I'm definitely going to lose these provinces. Um, and then what do I do when they rebel? Because I'm going to have no food. Um, so pretty much what you do to sort out your money issue, all you do is disband all your armies. You just get rid of them. So you may be asking, how the hell am I supposed to defend this vast empire? And you've just made me disband all my troops. How am I supposed to do it now? Well, basically, the short answer is you're not. Uh, the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, all the migrating factions are going to be attacking these provinces anyway. And you don't really want to be spending finances on trying to defend these provinces, which you'll probably lose anyway just because they'll be unhappy. So you pretty much just cut off your arm to save the rest of the body. And now you're making 12 grand instead of 700. You can now put this money on on probably normally what I do is about six provinces. So I find my most fertile provinces because obviously food is extremely important. I find the ones closest to Rome because Rome is obviously our capital or near our capital of Mediolanium. And I just defend them. I spend all this 12,000 gold, which I'm getting each month, on building uh, happiness, on building industry, on building farms. To, you know restart the empire as it were so I what I normally choose is I normally choose Africa Magna Grecia Italia um, Ligeria I choose Sardinia as well just because these provinces are islands and they're just annoying to get to so making them happy is always in your best interests um, yeah so I choose yeah this province as well and as well as Nabu now and again I don't normally do it normally once I've probably made my places happy I then I move on to this province here 
so to do this to start spending your money uh, what you want to do is you want to go over and start to putting in governors governors are amazing the earlier you put them in the better they become obviously as time goes on they get public own public order bonuses they get uh, financial bonuses it's just a really awesome thing so the ones I normally stick in my governors in is Africa, Magna Grecia. I normally ignore Italy just solely because Italy is normally happy anyway. I do Sardinia. So I pretty much put these people in the most difficult places to make happy. And then finally, I think Liberia, just because it becomes a bit of an issue later on. So as you can see, I put my governors in Sardinia, Africa, Magna Grecia and Liberia, Which now means I can go ahead and do edicts. So of course we're going to choose bread and game, this will boost up our food, as, as well as making people a lot happier, which is obviously vital, that's the whole whole starting game for the Western Roman Empire. So yeah, we're going to choose bread and games, or bread and circus for all of these, and now we also have 5 grand spent over. What I like to do with this money is to simply build waterworks everywhere I can. Making places healthy and hygienic early on is great because it means disease doesn't mess you up. And these disease can affect public order really negatively. And as well as that, uh, later on, these vineyards also give you public order, uh, which is just really, really, really good. Um, for a building which gives you money and food to then give you public order is awesome. So make sure you look out to get these vineyards in Magna Grecia. And I'll just go ahead and spend the last of my money um, over here. And yeah, cool. And then pretty much all you do is you do that for five turns, uh, or five, five or six turns, and then the, your six places should somewhat be happy. Oh, also, what I forgot to mention as well is I never normally build anything in Rome until the population surplus is boosted up to seven. Um, and then I go ahead and build a waterworks here because making Rome hygienic is really, really, really important. Um, obviously, as it is near the center of your empire, uh, it's probably the smartest thing to do. And the same with Ligeria as well. I normally wait till they hit seven surplus, just until I really build anything important there. Okay, so around about turn three is your Imperium should go up. This gives you another governor. I think that's the most important thing is it, it does give you another governor. Um, you can pretty much place him wherever you want within your first six provinces. Uh, it doesn't really affect it too much. I like to stick him in um, Vienna just because, or Vienna ATI, uh, just because it, that place normally gets attacked somewhat soon. So you just continue doing what you're doing. The only adjustment is I would improve this guardhouse. Um, Aquila is pretty much where you'll hold the hordes off um, later on uh, after this has all disappeared. The whole of Illyria has been taken over. Aquila is kind of where you hold the gates of Rome, so having a guardhouse encampment there is extremely useful. But apart from that, you just continue, like I've been doing, just improving happiness in all the provinces you can. Okay, so now we're on about turn 5. What you want to do is you want to have a look at the Empire. You might have a sudden urge to just start building armies and fighting back the enemies, because you've just been losing so many battles and you, you might be a bit, a bit frustrated with it. Uh, just make sure you don't do that, like, this strategy can carry on going on, um, and unless they're getting into Rome, you don't have to worry about it. Unfortunately, on this time, I do have to worry about it, because, uh, who even is this? Um, the Vandals are actually getting close to Rome, or at least close to my capital. So what I do when this starts to happen is I just start building garrison armies um, on my frontier in Rome. So I'll go ahead, uh, Flavius will go ahead and defend this, and I'll also go ahead and just build a small garrison force... Uh, of four units of spears. That'll be enough uh, to hold Mediolanium. Um, and now that the fact that we're building generals, what I like to do is just build um, just one general. Just one general, no units, and just put him in the provinces I'm trying to uh, keep happy. So I do actually have a force. Sometimes I do this a lot well, Normally, I do this actually a lot later, but unfortunately, um, this time the Vandals decided to be really aggressive. So I'll go ahead, um, I'll build my generals. And I'll go ahead and stick them in the provinces I'm trying to defend. So pretty much normally what I do is I put one in Magna Grecia, one in Carthage, um, one in Sardinia. And then I go ahead and just have one general to defend the Northern Pass with an actual army. So he actually will have a decent army. And the good thing is your troops are so much better than the Vandals or any of the migrating, uh, migrating factions at the beginning of the game. 
at the beginning of the game, your men can probably take on like three or four of their basic infantry. Uh, your men are just that good. So you really don't have to be building that many men. You can still see my income will still be like 10 grand. So I can still be spending that money on making everywhere happy. And as you can see, people are starting to actually become happy as well. If we go to our current, um, these are now down to minus two. And I've got buildings building in all these provinces at the moment. So probably next turn or the turn after, they'll start gaining happiness. And then all your six places will be happy. And then you can start focusing on industry. Around about two turns after you built your troops to defend certain places, you will start having food issues, which you can see I'm currently having. But it's fine to kind of leave it for about about a turn or two but then after by this point everywhere should be starting to become happy as you can see plus one happiness um and we've still got stuff to build there plus 12 happiness in africa uh plus four in magna grecia you can actually start building food in certain places and if you're really really desperate for food you can go ahead and start um start building food in Liguria in Italia however as as I said previously I'm just gonna chill with it I'm just, I want to build a waterworks here because um, then you can then get a, a reservoir which has like plus seven growth um, which is just amazing so I'm gonna go ahead and hold off I'm not gonna buy food there however I will go ahead and upgrade my fields in Carthage because you know it's plus 14 um, or plus 12 so when these are built it shouldn't really have that much of an effect and then, again if you're desperate you still have places like this you can upgrade but the reason you will be having a food problem now is because places will start to be rebelling around turn 7 um, you I think you already have to see like around turn 7 there's yeah Britons are raised there Spain will start to be getting close to rebelling um, so you'll start to lose all these food places so this is this is around this turn is when you need to start focusing on food now and not happiness because everywhere should be somewhat happy now uh, as we'll go to the public order places should start to becoming happy as you can see plus four plus one plus twelve your your main provinces should be happy and as you can see you haven't even lost much land either um, and we're about seven turns in and you haven't even lost like any of this land so really like having them armies there for seven turns hasn't really done anything at this point they've just been there fighting pointless battles which you don't have to fight um the only the only real issue we've had so far is this uh this army here but they can't get past because then they come in my field of field of command so they can't pass here so italy's safe at the moment and i don't even have to worry about people attacking aquila because that's safe at the moment so really having them armies were just pointless as well as building food as well around this time you also want to start be looking start looking to start building some industry you can see i have already i've built um, a workshop or maybe two workshops um, in my empire so far and you just want to start you know building the workshops building the fields and just start building the industry and the food um, in the provinces which are happy obviously you don't want to be doing it in the provinces which are just a little bit happy because the uh, squalor and public order will just affect them negatively so as you can see i'm just going to go ahead and uh yeah start building more industry Around about turn 10 or 11, the migrating factions will start becoming a lot more aggressive towards you and actually start fighting along your borders of Rome. This is mainly because they start getting bored with all these frontier provinces, so they, they then turn their eyes to start actually attacking Italy. This means that you should start focusing on military tech now. You want to go ahead and try and upgrade so you actually have a decent barracks either in uh, Varenna or Mediolanium. I think I have one over here. Uh, yeah, I have a, I have the second barracks here, the infantry ground. This allows me to recruit Palantines, and they should be strong enough uh, to take on uh, one or two or even three or four of the better migrating faction troops. So, yeah, make sure you have maybe like a decent army just make defending the north of Rome. Because around turn 10 and 11, that's when the migrating factions actually start getting close to you. And you should start to worry. Also, the food situation is still not looking great, but it will start getting fixed as you are building food. Um, as you can see, I'm building food in Liberia, and as well as Africa, you can see I'm building lots of food. So the food issue, um, which we dealt with like two turns ago, should be uh, starting to show us some good gains now. Coming into turn 16, your armies should be fully underway and ready to go. As you can see, I have uh, one full legion and one pretty much full legion just defending my borders. Um, and I'm still making 8 grand. The other troops I have at the moment is uh, obviously them two. I have an army down here just to garrison. Um, an army over here to garrison because I'm starting to push out. Um, now that Italy's happy, I'm starting to push out into Nabu to try and make these uh, this province happy. And obviously there's a lot of rebels around now so we have to 
you know, kind of start defending our borders a little bit better. Um, I have one over here in Sardinia to make it happy, and one over here just to kind of push back some armies. So you can see, I do actually have a sizable military army, um, and I'm still making eight grand a turn, which is great because it means I can then reinvest this money in industry and better Congratulations, buildings. Congratulations, you've made it to 400 AD and you have survived. Um, I haven't done this as well as I could have done, um, just because I got a little bit lazy. But you can see the majority of our empire is happy. Verena should normally 100% be happy as um, as your be defending it and the only reason it became unhappy is because i accidentally let some hordes through and they kind of messed up my buildings a bit so verena should normally 100 percent always be happy uh same with africa really i actually accidentally lost africa um um normally i'd probably put an army there to defend it but unfortunately that got away from me uh, sardinia is becoming happy now so the the provinces you wanted to um wanted to make happy should be happy by now um unfortunately it's not not two of the provinces aren't happy for me but they should normally be happy if you are playing properly uh, again my food situation because they're unhappy they're not producing as much food but normally in a proper campaign they would be, be producing me more food um and you should have a, a decent sized force like you can see i've got a decent army there i've got a decent army there and i've got an amazing army here as well as i've also got like an army in the, the south as well over there somewhere well i've also got some armies in the south as well um and i'm still making five grand a turn i've got 27 grand in the treasury uh, which has just been building up whilst i've been fighting hordes so now you're really in the perfect uh, perfect situation to push out you can keep on reinvesting in your industry um, which is something I haven't actually been doing but you would be investing in your industry so you should be making so much money you'll be able to use this money to push out attack destroy the hordes get rid of them um, and do yeah and have a really really fun campaign so I hope this video has helped this strategy um, I came up with literally just after release so there's probably going to be uh, better strategies out there for you right now however um, this has worked for me hopefully it'll work for you if you want to add on this theory uh, please do go ahead and comment down below saying oh wait you should you should do this oh wait you should do that um, just so that other people can see it and they can you know modify this strategy uh, make sure you check out my Western Roman Empire campaign on my channel. I'm doing a let's play of that and that's going pretty well. I'm putting this strategy into use. So if you want to see the breakdown, go over and check that out. Uh, make sure to give this a like and a comment. That'd be awesome. And also share it wherever you can. And um, yeah, good luck killing the barbarian hordes. And I'll see you guys next time. Fish out. I think is a good idea. It means the enemy can't use it. It means that you get some money. Yeah, look at my money at the moment. I have 37k. Um, in the bank like that's you must think oh that's absolutely amazing it means i can then upgrade the rest of my empire however this is not the case if you look at happiness now minus 205 and that's going to turn into a civil war soon which gives you more unhappiness like destroying stuff just isn't the way forward just destroying one province i don't think is worth it at least early on it's just not worth it so uh, yeah make sure you don't do that okay guys so you might be asking if i can't abandon places how am i supposed to get money and how am i supposed to sort out public order because as you can see right now public order is abysmal like all these places are start they're going to start becoming unhappy like i'm definitely going to lose these provinces um and then what do i do when they rebel because i'm going to have no food um so pretty much what you do to sort out your money issue all you do is disband all your armies you just get rid of them so you may be asking how the hell am i supposed to defend this vast empire and you've just made me disband all my troops how am i supposed to do it now well basically the short answer is you're not uh, the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, all the migrating factions are going to be attacking these provinces anyway. And you don't really want to be spending finances on trying to defend these provinces, which you'll probably lose any of or alliances at the beginning. So that's pretty much out the, uh, yeah, as you can see, attitude. Everyone just dislikes us a lot. Public order-wise, um, everywhere's just unhappy. Like, Italy's fine, and so is Liguria, and Vienna's just about happy. But all these other provinces will eventually just start becoming unhappy. Like, minus three, oh, that's well, currently plus three. Like, that's going to go very, very soon. All these other places, like Spain, is just... And a, an abys abysmal pit of just unhappiness. Uh, Africa is just really unhappy. And you might think, oh, that's okay. I'll try I'll try and make these happy. Um, however, if we look at our financial situation, we're currently making 700 gold a turn. So how am I supposed to go ahead and upgrade this when it costs five grand? Like, it's just impossible. So... So you might uh, go ahead and just try and make a few places happy. So you might agree. Okay, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore 
Spain completely. I'm not going to deal with that at all. I'm going to ignore Britain. Uh, so your first instinct might be to do this. This is what I did the first time, okay? Cool. I was like, cool, I don't want this provinces. Abandon. Abandon. And you pretty much just... I. This is what I pretty much did. I just abandoned everything I... So you may think destroying everything... Hey up guys, it's Fish here and welcome my glorious Bannerman. So as many of you know, the Western Roman Empire is the hardest initial challenge in the game. Uh, making them one of the most difficult factions to play as. This is pretty much due to the fact that they have like no infrastructure, uh, such a vast empire that it's so hard to keep everyone happy. Your armies are spread around everywhere. You have people migrating uh, away from the Huns, coming into your lands, trying to, trying to raid, trying to take land for themselves. There's a lot of negative things. However, I have come up with a fairly good strategy, I think, on how to give you the best chance at a successful western roman empire uh campaign um yeah it may not be the best one uh, there may be strategies after this which are a lot more effective so please take this with you know a pinch of salt this strategy has literally been made up in about a day so it may not be the best one however it's worked for me so hopefully it can work for you guys um yeah cool uh so we'll go ahead and jump in and i will go ahead and show you guys what the strategy okay, guys, is so we are now in the campaign um i will quickly just run through why we have so many negative things happening to us like what the current situation is and um, pretty much uh diplomatic everyone hates us uh a lot of people like it's so hard to get trade agree so the ones i normally stick in my governors in is africa magna grecia i normally ignore italy just solely because italy is normally happy anyway i do sardinia so i pretty much put these people in the most difficult places to make happy and then finally, I think Ligeria, just because it becomes a bit of an issue later on. So as you can see, I put my governors in Sardinia, Africa, Magna Grecia, and Ligeria. Which now means I can go ahead and do edicts. So of course we're going to choose bread and game. This will boost up our food, as well as making people a lot happier. Which is obviously vital. That's the whole whole starting game for the western roman empire so yeah we're going to choose bread and games or bread and circus for all of these and now we also have five grand spent over what i like to do with this money is to simply build waterworks everywhere i can making places healthy and hygienic early on is great because it means disease doesn't mess you up and these disease can affect public order really negatively and as well as that uh, later on these vineyards also give you public order uh, which is just really, really, really good um, for a building which gives you money and food to then give you public order. It's awesome. So make sure you look out to get these vineyards in Magna Grecia. And I'll just go ahead and spend the last of my money away just because they'll be unhappy. So you pretty much just cut off your arm to save the rest of the body. And now you're making 12 grand instead of 700. You can now put this money on on probably normally what I do is about six provinces. So I find my most fertile provinces because obviously food is extremely important. I find the ones closest to Rome, because Rome is obviously our capital, or near our capital of Mediolanium. And I just defend them. I spend all this 12,000 gold, which I'm getting each month, on building uh, happiness, on building industry, on building farms, to, uh, you know, restart the empire, as it were. So I, what I normally choose is I normally choose Africa, Magna Grecia, Italia, um, Ligeria. I choose Sardinia as well just because these provinces are islands and they're just annoying to get to. So making them happy is always in your best interests. Um, yeah, so I choose yeah this province as well and as well as Nabu now and again. I don't normally do it. Normally once I've probably made my places happy I then I move on to this province here. So to do this, to start spending your money, uh, what you want to do is you want to go over and start to putting in governors. Governors are amazing. The earlier you put them in, the better they become. Obviously, as time goes on, they get public own public order bonuses. They get uh, financial bonuses. It's just a really awesome thing.